Progress is impossible without change and those who cannot change their minds cannot change anything. Good evening and welcome. This is Face the Nation. Our topic of discussion today is disaster management in Sri Lanka. Are we taking a reactive approach or a proactive approach? To discuss this and more, we've invited three panelists to our studios this evening as well. Joining us this evening on the show are Engineer SPC Sugishwara, Director of Irrigation, Hydrology and Disaster Management. Also joining us tonight on the show is Engineer Dr. Asri Karunawardhana, Director General, National Building Research Organization, as well as um, Sunil Jaiwira, Director, Preparedness Planning Disaster Management Center. Let's start off tonight's show with Engineer SPC Sugishwara, Director of Irrigation, Hydrology and Disaster Management. Uh, Sugishwara, interestingly, um, over the years, we've seen floods in Sri Lanka. Uh, we've seen the 2016 floods in the country. We've seen the 2017 floods uh, that wreaked havoc in Sri Lanka, in most parts of the island as well. And now we are talking about floods again. Floods is something that we're talking each and every year. However, this time around, things were a little bit different. Now, we have the normal areas that are usually getting flooded as a result of flash floods or even heavy rains. However, this time around, even the areas that were not getting flooded were flooded. What is the reason behind this? Yeah, uh, so, uh, good evening. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, TV1 for taking timely, important this type of topic because uh, attention of the public has uh, been drawn for this kind of the issues uh, with these uh, kind of happenings, like uh, 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 dam damages, damages uh, are very kind of uh, being high uh, uh, than before. Uh, coming to your question, first of all, we must understand the these kind of natural disasters the nature of the of uh, uh, these kind of natural disasters like flooding kind of things are very complex in nature uh, there are a lot of factors affecting uh, for the behavior of floods uh, for example if you take the uh, the kalani river Kalani River is kind of a uh, starting from uh, the middle country from Nuareli and flowing through around uh, 140 kilometers and uh, getting into the sea at Colombo. Uh, so now suppose uh, now think uh, sometimes uh, rainfall pattern uh, is the major cause for. Uh, flooding in Sri Lanka, kind of, uh, in, in, if you take other countries, there may be some other reasons, like uh, even, in, uh, even in Europe, that high temperature may cause for flooding, because uh, ice, uh, that uh, hilltops are getting melted then, flowing through floodplains and getting flooded. But in Sri Lanka, the major uh, cause for flooding can be very easily understand as the rainfall. And there are other, re other reasons also, like uh, natural and sometime man-made reasons also. And, uh, and uh, man-made constructions are also, also reason for floods in the country. Uh, yeah, I, say, I said man-made reasons. There are man-made reasons. We, we need to accept that. Uh, like, uh, like uh, you have drainage lines. Sometimes uh, uh, people encroach drainage paths, and uh, drainages are blocked sometimes. So it does not allow uh, flood uh, water to flow naturally uh, and uh, get blocked. And uh, uh, and the the other thing I want to highlight the pattern of the rainfall not of not not of only the intensity of rainfall but also the pattern of rainfall 
for example, uh, sometimes Kalanu River catchment, upper catchment may get high rains, very high rain for rains. The lower catchment us uh, get nothing. No, but the question right now is, um, Sugeshwara, my question to you was, what is the reason for the areas that were not getting flooded before being flooded now? Uh, that's what that's what I am going to explain. There, there are no very very very. I cannot explain it in a very simple way. Right. Because the I start uh, by saying this these kind of things are very complex in nature. Mm. So if you want to understand uh, this type of uh, uh, the answers for these type of questions, the you need to. Uh, be patient to hear yeah. uh, for a uh, no, we can, we, we, we can, because we kind of a law to the show as well as to because I need to go to the other speakers as well. We have three mates in the opening round, but to give some direction, what is the reason behind this? Now let's talk about Vatala for an example. Most of the areas in Vatala are underwater, are inundated uh, because of floods at the moment. Uh, most of the people there are saying this is because of the central expressway that was constructed, and we are experiencing a flood of this sort only after this construction came into play. Can that argument be bought? Uh, I cannot, uh, I cannot uh, say, I cannot uh, reject that, uh, uh, that uh, public Claim. complaints mm -hmm. and I, at the same time I cannot agree with that. Uh, that uh, to, to understand that kind of uh, accusation uh, is correct or not, you need to study it, uh, you need to have a kind of a deep study, deep hydrological study. In-depth uh, study is needed for uh, uh, kind, uh, arriving at a decision. So uh, just by looking at, you cannot arrive at a decision. Uh, as, uh, as a professional, I cannot uh, yeah. do, uh, arrive uh, at a decision, but I, I, am, I am responsible for answer in such a question, yeah. but I need to start a uh, deep study, right. it takes time, which right. takes time. So, Gishara, isn't there a feasibility study conducted before coming into constructing such a project of this yeah. caliber? Yeah. Isn't yeah, that the role of the uh, definitely, irrigation yeah. department? Yeah, according to the Sri, the Sri Lankan law, that kind of a project cannot be implemented without having an in-depth study. Uh, you call it environmental impact assessment, which includes all the scenarios. The Central Highway project also uh, uh, implemented that study. I personally know because uh, the outcome of that study came to us for review even. The, I have personally reviewed the, uh, reviewed the uh, hydrological study done for Central Highway project. So uh, we have we, we observed at the initial stage before implementing, we observed some shortcomings and we suggest them some uh, uh, changes to do, for example, increase in the uh, wire duct sections so kind of things, they, which they accepted. Did, did, uh, have those changes been made now? Yeah, uh, they they agreed with us. But they, has it been done now? Uh, uh, I cannot exactly say, but uh, as a government uh, organization, RDA is purely responsible for implementing that. They right. cannot change that. Right. They, Thank you very much. There are uh, plans. Uh, right. Anybody can monitor whether they are uh, they are in accepting that or whether they are implementing the same proposal right. or not. Thank you very much, um, Engineer SPC Sugiswara, Director of Irrigation, Hydrology and Disaster Management. We now move our attention to uh, uh, Engineer Dr. Asri uh, Karuna Vardhana, uh, Director General, National Building Research Organization. Um, Asri, interestingly, when I was uh, a budding journalist uh, in Sri Lanka, between the years of 2004 and 2016, uh, where I was a journalist working for News First, um, there were less number of complaints against the NBRO. Uh, the NBRO seemed very active at that moment. However, now, a lot of fingers are being pointed towards the NBRO. Now, we have uh, the deaths of approximately 17 people 
uh, as a result of the inclement weather conditions that is inclusive of those who died in floods as well as landslides which comes under the purview of the NBRO. What is the reason behind this? Is it because people have constructed their houses in landslide prone areas or is it the fact that they have not been given the proper direction by the NBRO which is the competent authority to make sure that they build their houses based on the norms and principles of the NBRO. What is, what is, the, what is the reason for this? Yeah, uh, thank you very much. And I think uh, uh, this is a very good question to start this conversation. Uh, as you know, NBRO is the mandatory technical organization for the landslide uh, disaster management. For that, uh, so we are doing landslide hazard zonation mapping, uh, then the landslide mitigation work, uh, awareness and training, uh, and of course uh, early warning, so which cover all the, uh, I mean the scenario of the landslide disaster management. And uh, we are a technical organization, so we first uh, do the hazard zonation mapping in the country. So NBRO is the one of the organization which carried out uh, hazard zonation mapping in this disaster. So according to our studies, uh, we have uh, done the landslide hazard zonation mapping into 1 to 50,000 scale, 10,000 scale. From that studies, about 20% of Sri Lankan lands are prone to landslides. So I can show you some uh, graphs. So 20% of the Sri Lankan territory, Sri Lankan lands are prone to landslide. So you're, you're being to say, when you take a look at that map, uh, the map, the green areas are the landslide yeah, prone areas? I mean the middle area, middle, the middle area, area, middle okay. area. Okay. So mainly central highlands. The land. one which is uh, in yellow? Yeah, in, in yellow and okay. the reds. So in uh, central highlands and the surrounding districts, as a district wise, uh, Kandy, Nuarelia, Kalutara, Kegol, Badulla, uh, Ratnapura, Matale, uh, Gol, uh, Matara, and some areas of the Hambantota and the Krunagala, some areas towards the central highlands. So about 20% of the lands are prone to landslide and 30% of the Sri Lankan population are living in this area. So what is, what is the responsibility of the NBR? Yeah, now yes, you say about the early warnings as yeah, well. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let me explain. So you can see, so all over the mountain and all over the people are living. So as you know in Sri Lanka, so our uh, land management is not that good. So from mountain to, I mean, the, I mean the down slopes, all the people are living. So what is happening here uh, with the unplanned settlement pattern in the country? This is not the, I mean, the day before yesterday, I mean, the recent one. That, that has been happening throughout the history, right? People are living top of the mountain as well as the uh, bottom of the mountain. You know, some people want to live on the top of the mountain, right? And so this is unstable place. And at the same time, so, I mean, the climate change, the rainfall intensity has dramatically increased. For example, we suspect, we, as, as power research, we said, if the rainfall is, greater than 150 millimeter within 24 hours, any slope can be unstable. So in the recent past, uh, this kind of extreme event, the frequency of the extreme events are not that high. For example, last couple of uh, maybe last five years, if you look at that one, so we observe about 18 to 15 extreme event in the, for, for the year. So Asri, who gives them the green light to construct houses? Yeah, yeah. So, so because of that, right? Because of the number of extreme event increase, as well as the people are move in, into the slopes. So this uh, number of uh, casualties getting increased, right? So we have understood the situation, and we 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 tried to control that one because 2011 onwards we have issued the circular. So if you are constructing the house on the land, house in the landslide prone areas, you have to get the NBRO approval. From that process, we start on 2011, and up to now, we have issued about uh, 110 recommendations. Or recommend, uh, the, there are about 100, uh, 110,000. 110,000 houses has been constructed with the recommendation of NBRO. So nothing so has happened. Nothing to these has happened. Those houses. Uh, houses. Nothing has happen, happening. But what is happening here? So the process of getting the NBRO recommendation, we have to uh, we have to go with the system prevailing in the country. What is the system? So when you build the house, you have to get the approval from the 
uh, local authority or the urban development authority, some project approving agency. So once you submit the application, the copy of application comes to the NBR, right? So suppose if somebody is constructing house without the any approval process, so that application is missing from the NBR, right? So that's why I mean that's uh, I mean the now things that we have to consider. So we have to we have make some awareness program and ed uh, educate people. NBRO is not working as a policeman. We are trying to help you. We are giving recommendation to safeguard your property because you know in Sri Lankan countries, so we are building a house with all our you know money and all our earnings. So if that house is you are building on the landslide prone areas, so after the monsoon your house will wash out. So we yeah, are giving the recommendation yeah. to people and try to advise them how to construct the house which sustain for the landslide disaster. So Asri, you mean to say when someone is constructing a house, they have to first go to the local authority. Uh, let's say someone is constructing a house um, in the Dehavel municipality area. They are supposed to go to the Dehavel municipality uh, area to get their project proposal approved. And then automatically that project proposal is being forwarded to the NBRO. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, so the, the whose responsibility is that? Is it the responsibility of the... Uh, local authority to give it to uh, the uh, NBRO or is it the person who is constructing the house who should get the approval from the NBRO? Now, the landslide declared areas, the project approving agency which can be the uh, local authority uh, or the urban development authority, they are supposed to get the NBRO recommendation before they are approving this one. Right, so you are trying to say that the local authorities in question do not take the approval on most occasions from the NBR? No, no, that's not correct. Right. Local authority definitely, one, if they receive the application, they will get the NBR recommendation. But thing is, some houses are constructing even without local authority approval. That so is how, sufficient. So then whose responsibility is that? No, that, that? That is the thing. Now, we have done the research. So in this research, we in the, I mean, the rural areas. So about uh, maybe 30 or 40 percent application now only get into the process all other houses are constructed by them themselves the reason the reason for this uh Asri, is it a problem with the system or is it a problem with people not knowing uh it can be both it right. can be both it can be both but uh, now with the we, we have uh, discussed this matter with the all the local authority right. and try to educate the people and help the people to build their houses as a resilient house for the this disaster that is the uh, i mean the time timely needed task right thank you very much uh, engineer dr asri uh, karuna Vardaram, director general national building research organization uh, we now move our attention to uh, sunil jaivira director of preparedness planning Disaster Management Center. Sunil, really nice to have you back on the show after, uh, I think, yeah. after three years. Um, yeah. So that means the disaster management has been um, has been behaving right and being very disciplined in the last three years. And we are having you again on the show yeah. uh, to see as to what has gone wrong. So it's good news that you're coming on the show after nearly two and a half years to three years. That yeah. shows that the disaster management uh, process in Sri Lanka has worked well. However, 2021, because of the floods that had been reported in the country at present, again you are on the spotlight today. Uh, what is going on? Are we reactive or are we proactive? Actually, we are proactive. Actually, if you consider the Sri Lanka disaster management system, uh, uh, before 2004, we did not have a proper system of disaster management in Sri Lanka. After tsunami uh, incident, we lost 35,000 people. After that, uh, we established the Disaster Management Center and governed by the Disaster Management Act number 13 of 2005. And after that, established the National Disaster Management Council and chaired by the HE, the President of Sri Lanka. It comprised all the line ministries, vice chairman of the president and leader of the opposition, several other ministries in charge of the key areas. After that, we, uh, we have a national level platform to dis control disaster management and every district there, are, there is a disaster management coordination unit and divisional level and GN level we have a 
purpose mechanism to national level to grassroots level to uh, manage the disaster, every aspect of the disaster. These are the uh, institutional mechanism and now the national level we have uh, coordinated all the line ministries especially uh, we are working with the MBRO, irrigation department, water board, health department all are working with us. If that this year also the meteorology department forecasts that this year the rainfall is the near normal situation. Uh, during that April month, we immediately discuss with the, our technical agency what is our preparedness level in this years. Based on that meteorology department forecast, we prepare district level and divisional level and grassroots level preparedness. But the uh, issue is this year we could not conduct a uh, village level preparedness because the current COVID situation. However, we conduct the lot of program through the uh, Zoom meeting. So, it was very successful. I think uh, uh, media, especially we conduct the media program also, we pass the message to the, uh, through the media to the every community of the Sri Lanka. Uh, that, that is the good initiative this year. We how to uh, manage the disaster through with the COVID situation. Right. Um, so, um, still an interesting thoughts uh, that you're bringing to the table. Um, but as you know, it's very important to um, uh, pose questions to you uh, of the people uh, because yeah. people have questions with regard to how um, effective these programs have been. Because if you look at the numbers, yeah. there are 271,110 people. Uh, who have been displaced, amounting to 67,613 families. Yeah. Now, this is based on the Disaster Management Center yeah. a report that had been issued thus far. Yeah. Uh, the question is, uh, does that mean, because of COVID, that your organization was not able to successfully conduct its programs at village level? Yeah. But uh, we conducted the program through the media through the media at village yeah. level. Yeah. But have you been able to speak to these uh, village uh, rural houses directly to prepare them to uh, make sure that they won't face any eventuality as a result of uh, the disaster situation right now plaguing the country? Yeah. We conduct the, we pass the leaflets. We prepare the special leaflet for the uh, preparedness this year because we can't conduct the uh, rural level uh, Preparedness because we prepare two guidelines. One guideline for the community. Uh, this is the one guideline because we. This is especially for the uh, people who are working in the COVID situation and care management. These are the guidelines we prepare with the health department. Other one is the we prepare the guidelines and pass the every uh, distribute the community. So. What can I do this year? So the what is the objective of the Disaster Management Centre in Sri Lanka? Uh, this objective, there are a lot of objectives. This is the coordination body, the disaster, disaster management is the coordination body. Main objective is to save the life and property of property and environment of the country. Save the lives and property, property and environment of the country. Yeah. If you look at the flash floods now, 17 people have died, yeah. 5 people have been injured, 2 are unaccounted for. Uh, houses have been damaged, uh, amounting to 17. Uh, houses have been uh, partially damaged, standing at 978. Uh, the environment is in a problem. Yeah. So does that mean the Disaster Management Centre has not fulfilled its responsibility? No, sir, we can't say like the disaster management is every one subject. We can't do the disaster management because every line, ministry, community, everyone should be contribute to the success of the country. Otherwise. If you uh, work hard, but people are not uh, uh, not adapted to the situation, very difficult to do that. Well. The, this year, actually, the, Dr. Asri also said that a lot of construction uh, take place in the hapas are development and land use practices. And also, the uh, there are a lot of barriers of the legal, not enough legal barriers to control the unplanned human settlement. For example, 
when you construct in the houses in the rural area no uh, they they are not need to get the approval from the any authority because they construct in the houses their own will but if you have a legal system to construct in any houses with the approval of the local authority we can control right and and also we get the we are every house we give the electricity and water if you get the electricity and water if you are compulsory to get the approval we can control that that space right thank you very much um, uh, sulun javira uh, director of preparedness planning disaster management center i want to open the floor for questions from our journalist on to my immediate right as always um is brimming with confidence nadeem maji on to my immediate left is uh, jamal ratnayaka and also disal kapuge uh, both of them uh, did a good job uh, uh, last week on the show uh, so let's start off tonight's show with disal yeah. uh, thank you uh, shamir so i'd like to direct my question to you doctor now a very important part in disaster management is preparedness yeah preparedness uh, but then uh, Now there's a constant allegation from the people saying that Sri Lanka always predicts weather wrong, that our weather predictions aren't accurate. Now, if you look at the science behind it, if I'm not wrong, it comes through a computerized system which develops an algorithm to predict weather. If I'm not mistaken, which analyzes data patterns on yeah. uh, temperature and uh, wind and pressure that uh, uh, predicts this. But so. and i heard that most of our information comes from india which uh, determines weather patterns in the bay of bengal and uh, that keeps tabs on the monsoon season so does sri lanka the simple question is does sri lanka have adequate technology to accurately predict weather patterns that are yet to come to the country i think i is at uh, you are correct because actually there is the weather pattern is mainly Uh, studied by the meteorology 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 department we are depend on the meteorology department in forecasting we have passed the message to the base we are planning based on the meteorology department and irrigation department we are also depend on the uh, department forecasting but uh, i believe that uh, i agree with you because we are we we, are, we don't have a uh, developed technology like other developed countries because we are this small country we have we did not have a good technology dr javir uh, so mr javir what is the uh, annual budget of the disaster management center like what from the previous uh, for 2021 what's the allocation that has been made i think nearly 1000 uh, million rupees nearly. for the, all the mitigation training and preparedness and other administration Selection. So that all of that is intended. So disaster management center is supposed to coordinate with all of the other uh, government agencies yeah. and ministries and departments in responding to all disaster situations. Yeah. You mentioned the Disaster Management Act, which mentions everything from flooding and landslides right up to uh, a nuclear incident. Yeah. So my question is now. Usually, when we are talking about natural disasters, we are always talking about the Met Department and the Disaster Management Center. But in the recent past, we've seen with the Express Pearl, before that, the New Diamond uh, ship, uh, a lot of man-made disasters that have happened in Sri Lanka as well. Even the pandemic, COVID-19, yeah. is also a disaster. How come the Disaster Management Center is not playing a role in uh, the response uh, to any of these incidents? Yes, uh, that is the disaster management uh, for the agency of the natural and man is control everything. But issue is that the pandemic is a massive one. That uh, that control very difficult to control the disaster management center because that massive. Uh, that's why president appointed the task force because that is huge one. We are very difficult to control, but we give the support at district level to uh, district secretaries. we are not in the uh, igno all but at the last total level we are contribute certain extent mr javira you also mentioned the national council on disaster management yeah. when was uh, so this is chaired by the president coach uh, vice chaired by the yeah. prime minister it also has all of the relevant line, line ministers minister. members of the opposition in parliament as well when was the last time that this council met i think 2017 Turn 17. Conducted the uh, council, but uh, after that we did not have a major disasters. But uh, I think that this time to meet. How aren't they supposed yeah. to correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Mr. They're supposed to be meeting every quarter, right? I think if, the, if that is major disaster, we meet uh, immediately. 
but, but uh, we, yeah. uh, we did not have a we did not have a necessary to meet uh, every quarter but uh, we appoint the interim management committee in the disaster management we can take a decision but if you are we could get the approval from the mm. committee if can't get it we can proceed the uh, uh, but it boils down to that question what Radim is trying to ask you know uh, henceforth that means we are not proactive anymore we are always taking a reactive approach because yeah. you say that the council meets only after a major disaster strikes. Yeah. You can't predict or forecast a natural disaster. So isn't it prudent to meet at least every quarter to ensure that we are on the right track to mitigate think, those disasters? Uh, yeah. I think the question that I'm trying to ask is, as yeah. public officials, can you be yeah. satisfied with the level of commitment from the political leadership because the National Council on Disaster Management is the political body which has all of the different uh, political politicians involved. So can you be, ha can, are you satisfied as public, as state officials, are you satisfied with the commitment not just of this government, even of previous governments because even in the past like you said uh, they haven't been meeting. Uh, even uh, uh, in uh, the run up to the Easter Sunday attacks we saw that even the Na Security Council was in meeting. So, my question is that, as state officials, are you happy with the level of commitment you're seeing from the political leadership? Can I, can I, can I answer yes, that yes, question? Yes, yes, Dr. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, do you want to respond to it or? No, okay, no. Ah, right, okay. Yeah, because uh, now yeah. we are in the same ministry and yes, I have been yes, working yeah. there since 2011, so I can answer some questions, so I, yeah. I'll take that one. So, as Mr. Javier told, uh, officially the National Council of Disaster Management, maybe 2017, we had the meeting. But you have to understand that after that, the setup was changed. So, every six months or every th three months, we had the meeting with the Excellency or the, our ministers and the, with the, all the respective agencies. And when we prepare in the budget, so we had the meeting. Now, this ministry chaired by the, uh, is come the State Ministry of uh, uh, Internal Security and Home Affairs, which is uh, Honorable Chamal Rajpaksha, and this is the de uh, Defense Ministry. So every now, last, uh, maybe uh, one month ago, also we had a, a meeting with Excellency, and uh, during that meeting, the ministry progress was discussed. And uh, now, answer to your question. So th it was highlighted that the, the military department has to be upgraded. So it was in the budget proposal. So uh, it's uh, now in the agenda. So now there is a program ongoing. So the department will be updated with the modern technology. So that was already identified and they take the actions. And when it comes to the uh, national budget, uh, because the disaster management budget is come to the different ministries. For the landslides, so it budget comes to the NBRO. So this, th this time our budget is rupees 200, uh, uh, 2050 million. So it's huge budget. The large mitigation work and the irrigation department has separate budget. So it's not a disaster management center which coordinates budgets come to different ministries. Mm -hmm. I think the government has identified the priorities, has taken the action. For example, I can talk about the landslides. So landslides, so now uh, and the, uh, what is what, what was advised from the government and what is the way forward is to reduce the compensation or the, you know, the relief and invest that money into the mitigation and preparedness with that objective. So if you look at the landslide disaster, so we have the strategic plan. So how to mitigate this landslide disaster? So first we identified the hazard prone areas and then we converted this hazard into the risk profile. From this risk profile, we identify who are the pe people living in the high risk areas, who are the people living in the moderate risk areas, who are the people living in the uh, low risk areas, how we can protect their life and safeguard their life. For but example, Dr. Asi, you, you mentioned earlier in your opening statements as well in response to what Shamil, you said that uh, the, what the NBRO can do in terms of enforcement is limited. You, you said that we are not the police. So in that background, you mentioned that recommendations that have already been made are not being implemented either. Now we, we saw recently, not recently, but a few years ago when there was a a major building collapse in uh, in Vallawatta. Uh, the minister of uh, I think urban development, sorry, megapolis, megapolis. Said, megapolis at the time, Mr. Anoka, uh, made a public statement that uh, there are tens of thousands of buildings in the Kalamu district that are unauthorized, that uh, that don't meet the uh, safety conditions or building code. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah. And af after that, we haven't seen, in that time, we haven't seen any action that has been taken to address those concerns. So, based on what the then minister was saying, that means that there are still tens of thousands of buildings in the Kalama district, yeah. one of which could collapse at yeah. any moment. Yeah. Uh, let me answer this question with the recent example. Now, uh, actually, you said uh, about 17 uh, people uh, we lost due to the disaster. Out of the 17, maybe 80 percent of the people uh, we lost because of the they have not followed the instructions. For example, the Kegol 2 incidents where we lost about six people. All the people are in BRO has identified as a high risk and give evacuation warning, but they have not obeyed. And there was a legal uh, barrier to forcibly evacuate, but with this incident, the our secretary, General Kamal Guntratan, has issued this clear circular. If we issue the red warning, people who are living in the high risk areas by force, they will evacuate in future. So from that, I think the, the government is very active. So I now the enforcement is being handled via the Ministry of Defense. Yeah. yeah. So, so I when think was when was this statement issued? Uh, yeah, this issued uh, maybe maybe is uh, yes fifth of this month because uh, we understood this uh, we could have saved this about ten life uh, eleven life. So again, again, that boils down to the question, Nasiri, that we are taking a reactive approach now. If this release came before the floods hit the country. We would have been able to safeguard the lives of those six people or uh, six people in Kegol. Yeah, but uh, on, on the other hand, right? So these six people, I mean, these people has not obeyed the clear instruction, right? Yeah, and no, they but, have but do that, some uh, affidavit show? and those kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, and at the same See, time, Asir, we have yeah. a lot of respect to uh, yeah. all three of you as public officials yeah. because you are coming on the show. I know you all can't hold a candle to any government minister or any politician per se, but because you all have been. Uh, with the system over the years and you are doing a good job. There is no question about yeah. that. Isn't that why it's important to appoint people to these bodies who are political appointees who are knowledgeable? Now, let's talk about Kamal Gunratna as the uh, Defence Secretary, for an example, who is also in charge of the Urban Development Authority. Now, the question boils down, what does he know about building construction? Uh, no, I, I think that's not the point. That's, yeah. that's not the point, right? So, for example, now uh, what I what I want no, to say, people, must, people, yeah. people has their own responsibility, right? Yeah, so now we have now, competent people like who understands the job. Now, let's say if you are appointing someone to the uh, as the secretary of the Ministry of Health, that person, without criticizing the media, should do his job, his or her job, making sure that they are on the. Uh, doing the job of serving the people uh, quite well, but now the uh, again I'm not trying to point the finger at y'all and say that y'all are responsible for that. But it's 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 a respective politicians. If you have to tell these respective politicians, what would you be your message? No, I would it, think would uh, it be appointing the people to the right places with the right knowledge? Yeah, I, I think uh, if you look at our organization, right? So all the appointments are technical appointment and there is no political interference. Of course, they have provided clear guidance and the clear uh, di di directions. Yeah, yeah, but if that is the case, if why was why were we all acting based on a directive given by Kamal Gunratna now? Uh, wouldn't it have been the case to do it before Kamal Gunratna mm. issues a statement? No, no, no. Just, just imagine now this incident, the K-Goal incident. Now, in the K-Goal 2016, we had a disaster, Samasrakanda disaster, yes. right? So uh, after that disaster, NBRO and the Ministry of Disaster Management had, uh, uh, I mean, the did, did, did the survey and identified about 2,000 people who are living in the high-risk areas. And all these 2,000 people has been evacuated now. I think 1,800 people has evacuated. None of these people has uh, suffered this disaster. Only very few people has not obeyed. We have realized this one with this, 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 this disaster, right? So. Out of when 2,000 people evacuated, only five or six people has not obeyed this one. So, so do, that's not, uh, I do, mean, the wrong Did they have politicians. electricity and water? Uh, Sorry? Uh, did they have electricity and water? Uh, I, I think in Sri Lankan countries, to get the electricity and water, you don't have to get the COC or whatever. Right? Yeah, but you have to make sure. Now, as, as, uh, as um, uh, Sunil said, it's important to tie these, make sure that 
if it's a uh, if it's a construction that has been made without yeah. the permission of the NBRO or the relevant technical officers or the TOs for that matter, then water and electricity should not be granted to them. Yeah. And as a result of that, they won't be able to stay in that house anymore. Yeah. Because when there's no electricity and water, they have to evacuate. Yeah. Whether they like it or not. No, l l let me explain now what has happened. So we have identified 2,000 people are already live in the high-risk area. So we have provided a, a separate land and gave 1.2 million to cons construct 650 square foot house. And at the same time, we have given authority for them to... Uh, cultivate their previous land, right? So some people has not destroyed their old house and they are living in the new house and as well as they are living in the old house. So that that's what has happened in some areas. Of, so those things have to be corrected because of course, uh, uh, we, I mean, there are very few, few incidents, right? That's why this kind of, uh, uh, because uh, very, I mean, the quick actions, right? I think can prevent the further, uh, I mean, this kind of scenarios. Yeah, so I just want to quickly yeah. move to um, uh, um, SPC Subhishwar as well. We have a question from one of our viewers. The question is, uh, why don't you all release water from the reservoirs in advance when there is an adverse weather? Because when you store it and release it at the height of the inclement weather, it floods in the low-lying areas. Why isn't a proactive approach taken then? Uh, uh, that question is really impressive. Uh, uh, for, for example, uh, all these uh, three river basins uh, flooded this time has no uh, considerable storage facilities. Uh, the flood was not uh, because of uh, releasing water from upstream reservoirs. But I ag agree, sometimes there are some areas, for example, Dadurwaya in uh, Kurunayagala and Puttalam district. Uh, when the Royal Reservoir releases water, that causes flooding in, especially in Puttalam area. Uh, the irrigation department uh, has clear, very clear guidelines, very clear operation, uh, what you call SOPs, standard operating procedures, uh, which explain uh, the operation uh, sequence of uh, reservoirs. Now, for example, before the monsoon, before monsoon starts, before the onset of monsoon, we uh, maintain reservoir at a certain level uh, than the full, full storage level. If the reservoir is full, we release some amount of uh, mm. stored water uh, uh, so that we could uh, manage the reservoir uh, with minimum downstream effects. And uh, uh, that kind, that that question is very, uh, very uh, impressive. But uh, the 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 things are happening as uh, uh, as uh, uh, the the uh, I mean uh, things when are happening in that way. Weather, in, in that manner. Yeah, yeah. When there is an inclement weather, you are going to open the. Uh, uh, we are not releasing all the waters. Yeah. Water is, the, is our water. What is precise resource? We need water for next season. We need water for water supply. The the storage the water is storing for a purpose. No, you cannot release all the waters before uh, any uh, disaster, any 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 high weather event. But we mm. release expecting uh, some kind of a. Uh, uh, inflow, we release some amount of water, manageable amount of water, in order to uh, operate the reservoir uh, without causing much downstream damage. So, uh, Sugishwara, uh, what I have noticed over the years being a journalist myself, um, in 2000, and between 2004 and 2009, when there was even a minor uh, rain in Sri Lanka, one of the areas that go inundated or goes underwater is the Ratnapura district. Where? In the Ratnapura district. Okay. Uh, Ratnapura goes always underwater. The areas that are leading to Ratnapura goes underwater. Uh, and you have many issues. However, now that situation has been arrested. Now, greatly the government has been able to have a proper irrigation system in these areas. And as a result of that, you don't see uh, floods. Uh, constantly, as we experienced before in the Ratnapura district. You are referring to Ratnapura district? 
Yes. Ratnapura district has no any steroid facilities. I mean, the, in Ratnapura, in upstream of Ratnapura, there are no any reservoir. There are no any considerable no, really I, I, large I mean, reservoirs. When, when there is a flash flood, the system is good because there is a good sewage system, there is a good drainage system that is in place. As a result of that, the water goes without a problem. The water is drains out from the city quite well. Why can't we implement systems like that in areas that are being flooded at the moment? No, the, 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 I cannot accept that your statement, first of all. Ratnapura is a kind of a vulnerable area for flooding still. Uh, because uh, the because of the topography and the and the, the and the, the Ratnapura district is Ratnapura is situated in a uh, high uh, rainfall um, area. Uh, sometimes in uh, Ratnapura area, the annual average rainfall exceeds even 5,000 millimeters. The, the, you experience very high rainfall in Ratnapura. Yeah. The, and the, the topography of the river. Uh, the Kalu River starts from uh, Sripada Mountains and comes through Ratnapura. It's like uh, uh, it comes through a very high slope from Sripada Mountain to Ratnapura city. It's, it falling down like, as, like, a, like a what you call a waterfall. It's because the elevation change uh, from 2000 meters MSL above mean sea level up to 13 meters in, um, mean sea level at Ratnapura city just within 36 kilometers. It's a very high slope and from Ratnapura to Kalutara, the Kalu river has very mild slope uh, which change uh, only from 13 meters to zero at sea mouth uh, within around 76 uh, kilometers uh, as I remember. That, that range. Because of that slope change, Ratnapura city always gets flooded. That is na natural, na that is natural reason. Uh, Mr. Sugishwara, let's talk about development and uh, I want to draw a parallel to your opening statement uh, when Shamir asked about uh, areas that usually don't get inundated, uh, being inundated now. Uh, we saw on the news uh, over the past few days that uh, the construction of the Central Expressway has uh, led to many areas in the vicinity being inundated and uh, citizens complain uh, that the sentiments uh, that they express are largely uh, negative uh, towards the, the authorities saying that uh, they promised us an elevated expressway where water flows or the waterways will not be disrupted but now they are constructing the highway on a flat plain and waterways have been disrupted leading to the uh, surrounding areas being flooded. First of all I want to ask you is there a truth to that claim because I as a discerning citizen want to know whether the, the claims are true and two if it was planned to be constructed as an elevated expressway. How did the, the implementers of the project make such a haphazard decision to reverse that and construct the expressway on a, on a uh, flat plane? Can you explain to me? Uh, actually, as far as I know, uh, that express, expressway has been proposed uh, to construct as a hybrid, mm. kind of a viaduct for some sections. Uh, filling sections for some sections. Uh, uh, the the when the uh, when the path going through the flood plains, when it crosses Atanagaloya and uh, Uruvalloya, they have proposed uh, kind of uh, viaducts, which we call elevated highway. Uh, and uh, the the when the when the uh, when the highway goes out of the flood plain. They propose as a kind of a earth filling section. So, uh, as far as I know, that uh, that hasn't been changed. Uh, you may have seen sometimes uh, to construct even the viaduct section, you need kind of supply uh, supply roads and kind of things. Those are temporary constructions, which will be removed after the the permanent constructions are made. That is for supply. Supply. You need to supply 
materials, building materials, con uh, kind of concrete, uh, gravel, those kind of things you need to supply. So you, have, you need to first construct a kind of a supply road and then uh, you go for permanent construction. So Mr. Sugeshwara, why is this flooding occurring all of a sudden? Is it just a coincidence that this flooding has occurred, especially in areas where there is a major construction going on, or is there a reason, a specific reason, where you can pinpoint and say, okay, this is why uh, this has occurred? Uh, I cannot give a very direct answer to that question, only because of uh, uh, without having a very uh, kind of a proper detailed study. This kind of hydrological, these are the the theories behind this purely hydrological. That is my subject area. I purely accept that. I have to give a proper answer to your question. Isn't that why an environmental uh, feasibility study is done prior yeah, to a project being completed yeah, or implemented? Yeah, environmental feasibility studies have been done. Those have been forwarded even to us for review and we have reviewed those things and we are uh, uh, assured that uh, the, the, the flows are not disturbing because of this uh, kind of uh, constructions and uh, now the, the construction have been started and there may be sometimes uh, improperly made temporary constructions. I don't know which I have no idea about that. So do you believe this is only a one-off incident and not a recurring one because we can't risk the lives of citizens at the cost of development, can we? Actually, I have already, already, I have already started initial, uh, initial steps mm. to study what has happened. Uh, if you ask that question from me within next uh, three month time, definitely I could have give, uh, given you a very uh, uh, proper answer because as a professional, I cannot uh, uh, answer that kind of a question without uh, without having a detailed hydrological study. That has been started already, uh, very initial steps only. Mm. But uh, within next, uh, I, I believe I could... It's too early to tell. Yeah, too early to tell. Okay. Yeah. And also, Dr. Asiri, just for my information, does the NBRO, con, uh, con, or do they do any kind of assessment on these development projects, including the highways and other infrastructure developments? Do the NBRO conduct uh, assessments in that uh, regard? Yeah, especially uh, when the roads are being uh, constructed on the <coughs> mountainous areas, the NBRO recommendation is a must. And uh, also when uh, highways or roads construct on the marshy grounds, so NBRO is providing the technical advisory services. For example, you can't just build a highway on the marshy ground. Of course, if you have built an embankment, there will be excessive settlement. So you, do, you have to do some kind of ground improvement. So NBRO is a kind of expert organization on doing that one. So we are providing technical expert on these things. And uh, yeah. Dr. Asri, now most people, uh, they blame the government saying that the marshlands have been filled up because of the highway construction. And by the way, this area needs floodplains. It needs the marshlands in order to absorb the water so it does not cause flooding. So most people say that the highway is constructed in an ad hoc manner where these things have not been taken into consideration and hence it has led to flooding. So what is your expert opinion on that? Yeah, I think as uh, Mr. Sugishwar expert, uh, when uh, highways are being constructed, of course the initial hydrological studies are being done. I think uh, you remember when the Southern Highway constructed. So there are a lot of criticism in the Kahatudu and those area. So, because of the highway, I mean, the flood has occurred, but now things are settled. So, you have to understand, so in the Central Expressway, uh, I'm not sure, I mean, we have to study, but uh, as he mentioned, still the construction is going on, right? So, of course, uh, maybe when the final design comes, so as per the hydrologic studies, they have to provide the required opening to balance the water in the both sides, right? So, that is the basic uh, things. I think those things have been properly evaluated and executed in the projects. Right, but maybe due to the due, because of the construction stage, there may be some blockage or like something, but that need to be studies. Uh, now, for example, you could talk about the, the 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 viaduct embankment. Just look at the outer circular highway. So most of the about 80 percent now on the uh, elevator are, are in the viaducts. So government has uh, I mean the engineers have took the correct decisions. 
I think if it is necessary, of course, the, the, we have to invest on that, that one. And that has been done in the past. For example, Nilwala floodplain, all the highways on the, uh, I mean, the elevated highways, right? So uh, I think, uh, uh, I mean, the, with the pre past experience, I think we have done the correct things. And where it's necessary for the wider embankment, it has been constructed. Dr. Asri, uh, talking to you about uh, sustainable human settlement planning, this is essential to any nation, developing, developed, uh, so on. As the NBRO, how has the NBRO impl implemented effective sustainable human settlement planning over the years to ensure that our citizens do not fall prey to unforeseen uh, natural disasters? Yeah, I, I think uh, uh, that is a very uh, good section and in fact we have the separate section called human settlement and planning. So purpose is, I mean, that we have to settle the, I mean, that this, we have to make this settlement in safer manner. For that, it's so a very important thing is identification of, I mean, hazard-free areas, right? So that's the main reason in 2011, so we make the circular, we want to discourage this settlement in the upslopes. And uh, now I told you, we have approved about uh, uh, 110,000 uh, houses in the mountainous area. At the same time, we have rejected about 10,000 houses. So we, all, I mean, we have talked about that one. So we have rejected, and not only houses, some land plot development. So so many rejection, or we give the approval with some recommendation. Mm. So human settlement plan is is uh, very important. But uh, unfortunately, I mean, the, in some areas we have gone to uh, the level that it is very difficult to correct now. Also, but Dr. Asri, just add into the question that Shamir posed to you. Now, we talked about how the NBRO is not a policing system. It's more like a consultancy organization. It takes uh, efforts in terms of mitigation and uh, managing disasters. So now, uh, do you have a legal uh, portion, a legal division in your NBRO which can file legal cases against people who are not abiding by the laws or guidelines set by the NBRO? Uh, of course, uh, we are coming on the Ministry of earlier, on the Ministry of Disaster Management, now Ministry of uh, uh, National Security and Disaster Management. There we have the uh, legal department, of course, uh, we can get the, their advice. And at uh, the same time, of course, uh, we, we, we can get our own uh, I mean, legal advice. For example, there are some cases. But uh, you have to understand now, we are working for the now government agencies for example local authority uh, urban development authority uh, municipal council so they have their own legal system so if somebody is not obeying the nbro regulation of course the this project approving agency has to file the case against them and nbro is a technical partner to support this argument so that is how it goes and the same time so we are now in the process of the nbro act and disaster management act which is in the last stage so once it enact in parliament i think we will get the more power uh, mr sugeshwara uh, just to give a bit of context to my next question uh, a climate risk profile report uh, compiled by the world bank on sri lanka it says uh, the population annually affected by river flooding in sri lanka is estimated at 59000 people and the expected annual impact on GDP is estimated at 267 million US dollars and by the 2030s it is expected to increase up to 338 uh, million US dollars. Why do you think this sort of uh, effect occurs due to flooding? Is it because people are living in high risk areas on uh, high flood exposure level areas? or is there some sort of uh, mismanagement by the authorities on where they decide to settle people? Can you apprise me of that? Uh, uh, thank you for asking uh, such kind of a very, uh, I think, uh, interesting question. Uh, the, 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 uh, as, uh, as I said earlier, uh, the, the the answer is very complex and very I, I need to give a very lengthy answer otherwise uh, you will be um, yeah, people will mis misunderstand my uh, answers that uh, now uh, there are there are several reasons there are several reasons for increase in uh, flood uh, that that kind of uh, uh, the figures so as you said uh, the figures are on on increasing uh, now uh, 
Now, on one hand, the climate change effects are there throughout the whole world. We are not an exception. Actually, we are in the we are in the very uh, what you call uh, red zones. Now, international uh, organizations, some international organizations have warned that Sri Lanka is very sensitive for climate change. Uh, and uh, uh, as your question implies, we are, we are observing, we are observing uh, the, uh, at present. Uh, we had a big flood in 2016, then 2017, then again some floods in 2018. And, uh, 19 and then now 2020. The the uh, the the well, without any doubt, uh, we have to accept. We have to accept uh, that we are we are uh, we are. Uh, earlier, Sri Lanka was considered as a kind of a, a disaster-free uh, country or kind of a, a natural ha hazards are very less yes. in Sri Lanka. When did but, that change? Uh, normally, when, when, we are, when we were a child, uh, around 20, 30 years ago... Before the tsunami. We, we, uh, actually, yes, yes. That can be taken as the boundary point. Uh, earlier, uh, earlier, those days, uh, uh, we, have flood, we had floods, but uh, the damages were very little, not considerable. Now, but... Uh, uh, now, now we are experiencing now uh, kind of serious uh, disasters. Uh, that is purely natural. You cannot uh, blame uh, organizations, authorities, or the public. But on the other hand, there are there are responsibilities of uh, organizations, uh, public, and uh, government organizations like ours. And I. I honestly I accept that because we are not perfect. I accept we are not perfect, but uh, to be honest, I must say, uh, as the organisation responsible for uh, management of floods, uh, irrigation department uh, have already taken steps necessary, all the primary steps. Uh, now, just before uh, one year. Uh, we have is completed uh, re is river basin studies for very critical 10 river basins, <coughs> including Kalani, Atanagaluaya, and uh, Mahaoya, uh, Gin Nilwala, uh, the, on the other side, uh, Mundaniaru, and, and actually for 11 river basins. Those, uh, those 11 river basins covers more than the two-third of uh, country's land area and we have arrived at uh, the, the kind of uh, solution for uh, how to how to mitigate uh, next uh, disasters how to mitigate this floods how to mitigate floods how to uh, make use of uh, precise water resources available so uh, 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 so Vishnu, you said that you all uh, inform uh, now the Road Development Authority and uh, the necessary agencies with regard to what should be done to make sure that when constructing highways that uh, these highways, uh, the f f waters that are collected has a good streamlined mechanism for it to flow out of the highways. Am I correct? I, I could follow you. Can you no, repeat so, it? Today? So you all inform the Road Development Authority when they are constructing highways as to how the irrigation system should be in place, right? Yeah, sure. So who does the final follow-up, whether or not they have done it? Who does that checking? Uh, the uh, Central Environmental Authority is the mandatory organization for uh, issuing the final approval for any kind of a uh, major project in Sri Lanka, kind of, uh, kind of a, uh, for ex uh, uh, this highway project also has been approved by Central Environmental Authority based on uh, the EIA study uh, done by the project proponent that has been reviewed by uh, all the all the relevant uh, government organizations. And uh, uh, for example, hydrological uh, section has to be reviewed by irrigation department. 
and uh, so who makes sure that it is being done properly uh, hydrological things uh, because of uh, so you all can give the recommendation those that are well those understood. are reviewed by uh, by kind of experts so uh, the, actually those studies are done by experts and reviewed by the public author authorities and right. ex and and experts on the subject right. not by just administrators right so uh, just coming back to um, uh, sunil with regard to uh, the disaster uh, situation right now in the country because this is probably one of the most challenging times for the disaster management center because of covid as well um, so how does the social distancing aspect takes place now washing your hands wearing mask um, maintaining social distancing um, at these uh, camps yes uh, this year uh, we issue the special guideline how to manage the camp uh, signed by the director general of the health and service uh, and we, we consider several experts one is the care management how people living in the camp we issue the circular this year uh, people are when you go to the camp, camp we want to minimize the people come to the safety center because the present covid situation example the normally we all, allocate the about 100 uh, people this year we reduce 50 percent because we want to keep the social distance so that we give the special uh, uh, circular to the disease secretaries the disaster occur people are moved to the relatives and friends houses the when there is a disaster people are moved to relatives friends houses. And friends house because we want to reduce the people come to the safety centers because we very difficult to control because the present COVID situation that's why this year according to the data people are the uh, uh, about 5368 people live in the camp and people are uh, moved to the relatives nearly 5984 people so are you less say, you say 5300 people are living in camps camp. at the moment yeah so let's say there is a COVID positive positive case yeah. amongst these people yeah uh, does the disaster management center through the health ministry conduct a random pcr test on these people not yet so we can lapse we, the, yes there is a gap because because the, we can conduct the uh, very difficult huge task no very difficult because no but at least people living in the cluster, cluster system one family is the separate from one room other family is the separate one room that's why we propose this year because hundred percent can see the the TV how people are behave. So most of them stay at their houses. Less people go went to the camp because of the COVID situation. This year. Right. So getting yeah, back Mr. to uh, just a quick question subject, yes, on the okay. same subject. Uh, when would could this have been? Uh, I mean, people's unwillingness to congregate in uh, camps of, of, of upon re receiving like an evacuation notice. Yes. Could this have contributed to people not listening to the orders to uh, or the recommendation to evacuate? The people are not uh, not willing to visit the camp because of the COVID situation. People know because some people are live in their houses without considering the flood situation. You can see that sometimes if you have two upstairs house, people live in the upstairs and some of them are stay their houses without considering the flood situation right yes. so i want to pose a question to um uh, uh karna Vardana, uh, director general of the national building you know, research uh, organization um Asri, interestingly um one of our viewers who are watching the show tonight said that uh, their road uh, which is ba uh, which is in colombo 5 um, uh, the nbro had given them a short term as well as long term solutions to ensure that uh, the road in question will not be subjected to a landslide and uh, the area residents in that particular road in question had uh, got together put pooled in money and made sure that they um, 
implemented the recommendations of the NBRO on the short term basis. However, uh, the local authority was also present and it was done in consultation with the local authority. How it has been a year since then, no concrete action has been thus taken and now the road is in a dilapidated uh, condition. So, this is where in Colombo? Uh, this is in Colombo 5. I'm not sure this regard the landslide or some kind of settlement because it's uh, Colombo. I don't see any landslide problem there. No, it's May not a landslide problem. It's yeah. uh, the road being in a dilapidated condition. All right. Maybe maybe the poor quality construction and then the local authority seek NBRO approval for the improvement. So I think NBRO. Uh, it's the uh, Allen uh, Matini Yaram Road in Colombo Five. All right. The highest point of land in Colombo. Right. Uh, so I mean, uh, I'm not sure exactly, but uh, of course the uh, NBRO. No, but 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 does the NBRO take time to act? No, I don't think uh, because uh, this is very close to our office also. Uh, if uh, local authority seek NBRO approval, so we could have done the, all the investigation and give the recommendation. That is what we are doing as right. a technical consultant. So this is this cannot be independently verified either because. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, not at uh, I mean, the the, as a director general, so please ask them to contact me. And if there is any lapse, of course, we can uh, correct that part. Yes. Definitely. So, yeah. uh, the viewer who is watching, um, you got the message from the Director General of uh, National Building Research Organization. If there is a problem on your road, uh, contact... Uh, no, I mean, if he has involved there, involved there. The engineer, so please, Asri yeah. Karna Vardhana, uh, and then um, can get some uh, input on, on how things should be moving on also, as far as that goes. Also, if concerned. I may, Shami, yes. Dr. Asri, a question for you. Now, I came across this report about the rate structure for damage assessment. The report where the NBRO has listed down the amount of compensation that will be provided for houses affected by landslides. So now according to that, now can you give us a rough outline on the amount of compensation? I know it can't be exactly pinpointed, but roughly let's say a person lost his house, he saw her house through a landslide or it was partially damaged. What amount of compensation would the NBRO recommend in that kind of scenario? Oh, actually, it's not the NBRO, so our ministry has given the recommendation uh, on the damage assessment. But so the assessment is done by the NBRO, is it? Uh, yes, technical assessment. No, it, it, it's like that. Uh, of course, uh, if there is a minor damage, that will be handled by the engineers and the technical officers in the divisional secretary level. And if there is a huge damage, of course, if some technical input is necessary, only NBR will go to that one. So damage compensation is go up to the 2.5 million, 2.5 million maximum. And so uh, under that, of course, we do the necessary assessment, roof damage, house damage, everything. So technically, we have assessed the criteria based on the district rates. We have the developed district rate, no? Based on the district rate norms, of course, we estimate that one and give the compensation. So that will be handled by the National Disaster Relief Center, which comes under our ministry. So can any person whose house was damaged from a landslide <coughs> claim compensation? Not only landslides, natural disaster, landslide, flood, uh, high wind, so uh, uh, fire is not there. But, I mean, so if your house is damaged due to natural disaster, you will be compensated. Whether you rich or poor, there's no social category. It will be you will be compensated. So, Dr. Asri, if you're, if say there is a citizen living in a uh, landslide-prone area or uh, an area prone to natural disasters, and the NBRO uh, realizes that they are living in dangerous conditions. How do you facilitate their relocation? Yeah, thank you very much for asking this question. Actually, uh, now, uh, as I mentioned uh, previously, so we have uh, developed the susceptibility vulnerability maps in all over the country. And this map, so we have developed high hazard, moderate hazard, low hazard. So we have identified about 15,000 houses are on the high hazard areas. So government has initiated to relocate these houses in the safe land. So what we are going to, what we have done, so we could, we could 10 perch land and 1.2 million to construct 650 square foot house. So that process has been taking place and already Kegol, this is 200 houses has been completed and uh, Ratnapura, Kaluttara, Gol, Madra, all other districts about another uh, th uh, uh, 1,500 houses completed and another 600 houses in progress and this year we have a target, we try to c c complete at least uh, 
1000 uh, houses and within the five years time we want to complete all these high risk settlements in the safe locations so the, let's say someone has constructed a house just getting back to this house question uh, so let's say someone has constructed a house in a red zone uh, based on what NBRO is saying and his house gets damaged as a result of uh, the inclement weather conditions is he or she also eligible for compensation if he has constructed this house before 2011 before nbro recommendation implemented of course uh, uh, so we are i mean we identify this house as a high risk settle I mean, high hazard area so we will ask him to relocate in a different place and we will give money that is in place and this all these 15 houses already built already built so no, not a new houses already built in a certain uh, i mean few years back and of course these houses now so uh, now you all categorize uh, dr asiri you all categorize um, disasters or floods into minor major dangerous and critical am i, am I right yeah floods floods floods, yeah. floods are Flood. being um, yeah. categorized as to minor major um, dangerous and critical how do you categorize the floods now what we're experiencing at the moment or in the last few days. Now it's being receded, but the, the last that is a uh, flood classification is kind of a international classification. It's not uh, it's not in uh, locally local uh, classification. Now uh, floods are classified based on uh, based on flood levels, based on frequency. Now suppose some 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 level floods are occurring yearly, annually there are some floods some some level some small floods are occurring very frequently those kind of things are floods are kind of uh, minor floods I know yeah, but but what we experienced in the last three to four days how do you categorize that you mean uh, the, you mean last flood the last flood, the ah, recent yeah, right, right. The last flood uh, actually uh, in Canary River it was categorized into minor flood uh, based on uh, water level observed water level and uh, in in Kalu river also uh, some areas it reach major level uh, some areas most uh, most of areas uh, it was my it so, still categorized um, as minor so Sugisha, so, so while um, while uh, thanking again the three of you gentlemen for coming on the show tonight and you all are government officials um, uh, what I'm getting from our viewers is the fact that they are not yet content with the answer that you have given on um, uh, doing an assessment in the next three months to figure out what went wrong in the country in terms of the recent floods. Um, they want to know, uh, is there a quick fix when there is a situation of this sort? Um, is there, uh, uh, at least a, a temporary solution can, that can be made by the government uh, to uh, bring relief to those people who have been affected as a result of uh, floods you mean uh, temporary kind of solutions uh, yes because now what you're saying is uh, Sugishwara you have to wait for three months assess the situation that will take some time as well and that it eventually will go on for an, a few more months we know the way in which you know <laughs> please, don't mis please don't misunderstand. Yeah. I, I uh, gave an, uh, uh, I gave time limit for uh, around three thousand, three months, three months for study in the co uh, whether there are effects of highway constructions uh, for in 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 uh, yeah, because those people, yeah. floods. So those people are saying that they want to know quickly as to what went wrong because yeah. if there is an issue uh, and if they are going to be affected in this sort, in this caliber as a result of a minor flood that has happened right now, uh, their houses are in danger. Now we saw what happened in Vallampitiya uh, in 2016 uh, when, uh, uh, when the Kalani River overflowed. Uh, most of those houses um, cannot be even sold to another tenant anymore. So people are facing problems. These are general questions that are posed by general people who are not like you and I, who have probably earned their money uh, with difficult times, with difficulty, with time they've constructed a house after 15, 20 years of working, maybe in the private sector or the public sector. So these are genuine problems they have. Now they have already constructed a house 
for the last 10 years it has not flooded guess what they build a central highway it starts flooding and Yusugishura is saying let's wait for three months and assess the situation how far is it that's the that is the nature uh, nature of uh, that, that kind of things cannot be it cannot be studied within uh, overnight, within one night. No, no I can, agree with you. There is no yeah, question yeah, about that. But, yeah, that is but the, we that is have the nature to give them the an question. answer. But when, when we say um, uh, we will give you an answer after two, three months as to whether it's a central highway, the people can't wait. And we are talking about, you know, spilt milk after that. We are talking about um, the, uh, the horse bolting the stable. Uh, later on, all these are uh, immaterial I, 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 I fully agree with you. People are suffering a lot. I, I agree with you. These are, these are burning questions. When, you, when my house is uh, inundated, I am suffering a lot. When your house is uh, underwater, it's, uh, it's kind of a, a disaster for you. I am I'm posing when, this question to you, Sugeshwar. Why? Because I stayed in an area in Ratmalana. Uh, in my uh, early days in life, um, from um, from 1994 to 2001, uh, in this house down second lane in Ratmalana, and every time there was a flood, that meant that we couldn't go to school for at least a week, because the entire house used to get inundated, and we as kids at that time used to pack our bags and go to a different location in order to um, get some safe haven because the house was underwater. Now these are burning questions people yeah, have. Yeah, 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 I, I know it, I feel it because I have undergone that yeah, same uh, am, experience before in my life. I am also from a floodplain in, in Nilala River. Uh, so I, my house also has been experienced for, uh, th these kind of floods in my uh, early uh, areas. Now, uh, the, now the thing we must understand is uh, these type of natural di disasters are very complex, and solutions are also complex because of the because of the uh, uh, type of the uh, the type of the issue. Now, um, now if you if you are seeking very urgent solutions, you will be ending up with nothing. Therefore, the solutions has to be planned. Uh, in a very kind of a uh, detailed, without having a very detailed studies, uh, you cannot give a proper solutions for these kind of problems. No, no, we have Sugeshwar. studied Kalani River for two years, for two years, and arrived at decisions, arrived at solutions. Now we have, we, now we have uh, solutions in the table. Now we, we need to find money and uh, implement. Uh, uh, the the solutions for Kalni River flooding, Kalni River from from uh, somewhere in Avisa Vale to uh, River Mouth, uh, the 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 area can be protected against floods by structural measures, uh, and uh, and we have we have uh, completed uh, the solution plans and uh, the estimates right. and now we need to uh, find money and implement so we that have a will question take time that we will take definitely time as a responsible media personals you must understand the, the, the not only the, the the situation of the public but of also the complexity nature of the issues yeah, the problem is now because you spoke about the role of the media and how responsible the media should be the problem is, Sugeshwara, uh, we have been telling over and over again that there needs to be proper plan implementation as far as this irrigation system in Sri Lanka is concerned. But none has been done. Let's, talk, let's take a look at the 2016 flooding that took place in Sri Lanka, 2017 floods that took place in Sri Lanka. We were talking about this repeatedly and we are today talking about it again. And Sunil came on the show three years before 2017 when the major floods took place in the country and we are talking about it over and over again. Now you are saying two years we've been doing the construction work and analyzing the Kalani uh, river. Yeah. What is the solution yeah, now? Yeah, yeah. I, I, because we have to I, always stand. Yeah, I, I, See, I, we I, have I, seen people, politicians. I am not saying, Sugishwara, that you are responsible. I am not in any way trying to say uh, Dr. Asri is responsible. I am not in any way trying to say that 
uh, Sunil is responsible. I wish we had some politicians here to drill them and tell them what is going on with y'all. Y'all have been in parliament for so many years and nothing has been done so far. We, we uh, I can, we can understand your feelings, but uh, uh, that again and again I have to tell you these, these kind of natural uh, uh, problems are very complex. For example, I, I, I will give you a best example. Now, you know, Japan is a, uh, is a very well developed country. The, you, do you know how many times Japan, Japan, Jap, Japan has been subjected to floods? Uh, that you, you, as media personals, you may know better than me. Uh, what kind of uh, uh, damages uh, uh, happened in Japan uh, because of this kind of floods, uh, uh, because of disastrous floods in Japan? The difference is Even in they Japan, could not. Uh, the, situation, the difference is in Japan. You have politicians who are responsible for the people. One time it floods, the second time it doesn't. The people, the, the governments in play make sure that their people are made abreast. But in Sri Lanka, that is not the situation. Now take no, a look no, at, no. now I, take a look I, at, I, I'll I, take a classic example. No, the no, I am, the, I am telling the vice versa. The, I am telling vice versa. I, yeah, yeah, even in Japan, yeah. problem are frequent. But, but let's take a look at the government program that was launched, the ministry that was launched in Sri Lanka. What has that ministry done so far? Tell me. Now there is no ministry for that because respective politicians come into play just because they have problems with uh, respective uh, politicians before, they scrap that ministry and go ahead. Now we are talking about that same minister who was there in Sri Lanka before, now he's not. He's the head of the COVID task force, he's not even in Sri Lanka. Uh, so all these, I'm, not, I'm not asking you to pose, I'm not asking you to respond, uh, Sugesh, I'm just saying this is the plight of this resplendent nation. Politicians over and over again have taken Sri Lankan people for granted. And as a result of that, people are facing the brunt of all this and more. And unfortunately, you all as uh, government officials cannot say anything more than uh, listening to us uh, make these uh, complaints yeah, and, and bring those people to uh, light. What I when there is a major disaster, Normally, in the disaster management patrice, we do the post reviewing and see what went wrong and do the correction. For example, he, he talked about the Japan. So, in Japan, when there is an earthquake, right? So, they see what went wrong and they update the building code. Likewise, I think that's why when we had the natural disaster or catastrophic event, so we have to see what went wrong and how to prevent that one. So that is the general disaster management practice. We need some comprehensive study and see. And, the, and the, based on that, we have to take recommendation. Of course, as he mentioned, we have to implement those things. So yeah, that's then, how uh, the country yeah. goes on. But then Mr. Sugishwar, just to give an example, like three days ago, I went to Uswatakeya to report about the ship situation. But then that area was entirely flooded. But according to the people, there is a sluice gate that was built there a few years ago. And then they say that because this sluice gate was not open, even when I went there, it was still closed, the area was flooded and they were prepared to take uh, mammoths and all that. They were prepared to dig a way for the water to go into the sea from that area. Now, if you look at situations like that, also there are issues with drainage that have caused these floods in the Vattala and all these areas. So now these are solutions that we can see. So in those terms, why aren't those solutions applied then and there? Uh, you mean that Pattivila, Pattivila... Near the Uswetakeya, the fishing hub, that area. Yeah. Mm. So, Disal was on location at that time, so... Yeah, yeah so it's a first-hand experience and the people told us that since this sluice gate was built, it hasn't been open for years, but there hasn't been a, been a flooding situation. But now the houses were underwater and they were like, they need to open this sluice gate for the water to subside into the ocean. Uh, are you referring uh, uh, a kind of an old... That, that kind of uh, newly gate. constructed sluice gate? No, it was or? actually built during the previous government. It's like uh, four years old. Four years old. Uh, it was open. Huh? Today, it was, today evening it was open, I think. Uh, yeah, so that took three days and uh, these people uh, were uh, underwater. As far as I know, I, that has been constructed for uh, kind of uh, securing the, the water to the, to the, to the, the, the pump house there. There is a there is a water supply location at that point, no? Sit, in that sit, area. Uh, this yeah. was uh, built near the marshlands, and it bars the water from reaching the ocean. Uh, that was due to conservation purposes. But then the sluice gate was built for a reason for the water to be let out. But then they claim that since it was built, it was never opened, 
and uh, the, even the mechanism was rusted when we got there. So clearly if you open the sluice gate, now anyone can see that the water would subside and the houses would be saved, but then it wasn't done on time. So that is a problem. I know it's not the fault of the irrigation yeah, department, yeah, yeah, but then in those senses there are solutions that, that can be seen. Uh, that, that location, right. I'm not aware of that structure. I cannot give exact answer for that. Purely, surely I can assure that that structure is not under irrigation department. Uh, Dr. Asri, speaking of drainage, uh, let's take the Colombo district. Uh, we have the Urban Development Authority during the past government. We had a minister for megapolis development and so on. But we see that our roads uh, constructed so uh, regally uh, during election season or what not. Uh, being flooded, they turn basically into rivers when it rains for an hour or two. Why is it? Is it because of poor drainage or is it because marshy lands have been filled and buildings have been put up there, their water cannot flow into uh, the waterways properly? What is the reason behind that? Uh, I think maybe uh, Mr. Sudhishwara can answer this one, but uh, I just give. But uh, now there is a project going on under Greater Colombo. Uh, so, uh, uh, stormwater improvement project and uh, uh, fortunately this time there was no flood in the Tumula area right uh, this project very soon be commissioned and then the Colombo flood will be uh, solved to certain extent so, you, know, you, you can add I think you yeah, know about yeah, this one that, uh, as you uh, correctly mentioned in the question uh, actually you uh, gave the answer already uh, the, the, the if roads are flooded there is there may be a there may be natural reasons behind and there may be some uh, structural reasons kind of the if the drainage path is not enough uh, naturally during a high rainfall that will be inundated so the as far as i know colombo drainage system has been designed for uh, for a uh, event like 200 millimeters per day mm. per 24 hours uh, now, uh, now, because of this uh, climate change uh, issues, climate change effects, now uh, the, the, the intensity of rainfall has been increased. We are, we are experiencing uh, 250 millimeters or so within just within six or seven hours. The, 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 the drainage systems are now uh, not enough. So and do you believe the intensity of natural disasters has increased over time, but we have failed to adapt our systems to cope with solutions such a are, intensity? Solutions are being implemented now. Even even at this moment, Columbia drainage system is being improved. You may have witnessed, mm. uh, uh, starting from 2010, there is a uh, what uh, there is a project going on to improve the Colombo drainage system. But don't you think such upgrades are few and far between? Because more often than not, flooding does occur uh, in Greater Colombo. As far as uh, my, uh, my opinion now, the 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 the, the proposed, uh, I mean the system being constructed uh, after completion, that will be a very good uh, uh, solution. Hmm. That we that will be a very good. That was a. Uh, so we have a. We have a question for um, Asri. Now, your institution basically speaks about sustainable development and the importance of a sustainable development uh, in the country. Uh, given the rapid development uh, plans um, and its implementation in Sri Lanka, how much time is devoted to planning, mitigation, and imp importantly, implementing? Uh, a question from one of our viewers. Yeah, I mean, the, so. Oh, when there is, uh, it depends on the type of project and the scale of the project. Of course, uh, now uh, we, as he mentioned, for example, the highway projects. So we have to do the pre feasibility, uh, feasibility, and the uh, designs and a lot of stages. And recent development is so we do the disaster impact assessment before carrying out the project. Now that is, uh, I mean, we have understood because of the recent, uh, I mean, the experience and the observation. So there are many disasters and there are many infrastructure have been subject to the damage soon after the construction because we have not looked at to the disaster impact assessment. So this is a new trend and we have been adapting this one. So in addition to the, the EI present EIA process, so all the major projects 
Now we are doing the disaster impact assessment. So that what it means. So we try to simulate and we try to build the structure which can be sustained for the natural disaster. So I think we have to take some certain time and of course uh, the cost may be increased by 10%. But for example, the house that I am talking, I was talking about 1.2 million 650 square foot house. So this is a disaster resilient house that can be sustained for the high wind, uh, minor tremor. 1.2 million square feet? 650 uh, 600, uh, 650, 650, 650 square foot 1.2 million. million houses yeah, yeah, ah, right, okay, yeah. Sorry. so that's the when you talk about normal house it's got about the 800,000 but this is a 10 percent higher than that one but in the long run this house won't be subject to any natural disaster so that's why so we are taking to that approach so I mean the resilience construction so that has been factories and of course it needs some time and it needs some money but that investment is worthwhile in the long run. Mr. Sugeshara, over a long period of time we've seen uh, not just during disaster situations but even with farmers uh, when it comes to getting water for their crops, a constant complaint that you hear is that the maintenance, the, that the capacity of reservoirs could be increased if silt deposits are cleaned. And uh, there are allegations that are made. Of course, there are uh, MPs from who are now in government, formerly in opposition, MPs who are now in opposition, formerly in government, who constantly they keep uh, accusing each other uh, of not uh, take of not uh, allocating the resources for these cleanups. Is there really? Uh, what I want to ask you is: is, th is this really a major problem in the country right now? The cleaning of reservoirs. Uh, there, there are this, this, that kind of uh, that kind of accusation, but uh, um, and now irrigation department. Uh, there are around 87 major reservoirs under irrigation department, and 300 uh, about 300 mi medium size reservoirs and also under irrigation department and minor minor tanks are not under irrigation department but under uh, kind of uh, provincial councils and uh, agrarian development department uh, i am referring only to the reservoirs under irrigation department because i have no big idea about, uh, other, about the others other, yes what's under mahavali so, and yeah, what's yeah, under so, the yeah. provincial council uh, those those reservoirs uh, we have recently we have already uh, what you call capacity curves. We have, we call it technically area capacity curves. We have we have the, those curves uh, in our table. Uh, in the, uh, the, uh, now recently we have done it again uh, for most of these reservoirs, and uh, we did not see that much difference. And that is the way whether. To, to tell you technically whether they are uh, whether the reservoir has been silted uh, considerably or not you have to do kind of a survey we call it tank bed survey based on the tank bed survey we prepare that area capacity curve so as per your current tank bed surveys yeah. is it a problem it is, it is, is it not a problem it's, it's not, not a, a real problem situation. for irrigation reservoirs under irrigation department under the only this is your your speaking yeah, only for yeah. the reservoirs under yeah. the irrigation department but, but still still uh, i must say there are some few cases there are few for cases. example i i can uh, tell you the name there is a reservoir called uh, bomoral in no, in in in, in Norelia district, mm. uh, that was uh, reasonably uh, silted. Uh, silted, and uh, we implemented some mitigatory measures few years back. Uh, and Mr. those Jason, are very the other question that I want to ask you is because with the irrigation department, as with many other sectors in the country, uh, this sort of not decentralisation but the separation of uh, let's say there's you have the Mahavali Authority which runs several reservoirs, you have the irrigation department that is responsible for some, then you have some that come under the provincial councils, uh, let's say under the local government. Is this problematic when it comes to making decisions about uh, the irrigation systems of the country? Because I assume that, for example, you won't be able to interfere when it comes to uh, waterways or reservoirs that are under the purview of the Mahavali Authority. And I don't think they'll take very kindly to 
uh, irrigation department officials interfering. What is the is there is there a collaboration it, it, or is it? It, it is separate? not so. It's not so. It's not no, so. We uh, as as the government uh, mechanism, we are no, not that much separated as at present situation. Maybe earlier uh, we thought as irrigation people and the Mahavali people, the Nagari people. Now things are now changing. Now uh, we. Gen now, for example, now NBR, they, they are monitoring rainfall. They share with us. Now, uh, now uh, D when DMC has some system, they share with us. And when we have some system, we share with them. And uh, likewise, now, uh, for example, these days, we are, we are rehabilitating uh, the tanks and the agrarian development department, minor tanks. Uh, we, ha we are not responsible for rehabilitating minor tanks. We have undertaken that task on behalf because uh, the capacity of uh, agrarian development is not uh, enough for uh, taking such kind of uh, uh, task. So you have, feel that the job could be accomplished more efficiently if these departments and authorities were streamlined? Uh, personally, I, I agree with you. Uh, uh, so I I wish if uh, there there was a one no, there is a one organization who could look after the all the irrigation things. Uh, but in in there there but actually these organizations have been built for a reason. They have uh, different purposes. The yeah. Agrarian Development Board has its own purposes and the Mahavali yeah. Authority has they have look Authority after the other been... issues faced by the farmers in the various zones. But I'm saying when it comes to the management of the waterways and the like those departments can still exist and look after those individual needs. But the overall management of the waterways and uh, reservoirs, uh, the irrigation systems of the country should be uh, streamlined, shouldn't it? Yes, I can. I can agree with you in that sense because, and our organizations are also uh, uh, started to think in that way, that manner, now, how to improve the management system. Now we are talking about uh, kind of a uh, um, river basin management system and uh, policy water resources ma in, uh, improving the water resources management policy of the country. Those kind of. Uh, Things are now uh, on the stage. Yeah. Mr. Sugish, Thank you, Mr. Uh, uh, just one quick question. This is uh, for Mr. Javi, and then you can yeah, take it. Uh, when it comes to uh, allocating disaster relief or allocating funds that the, for the disaster management center, my understanding of it, please correct me if I'm wrong, is that uh, the National Council on Disaster Management plays a big role in deciding on making decisions on fund allocations. Yes, yeah, uh, no need to make the uh, national council. Already we, already we allocate the relief about 74 million rupees for the... That's for, for the current situation? The current situation, without considering... But should still we people are in uh, disaster situation. Not, uh, already we don't, yeah. present we don't have a much disaster, but uh, after settle, we, we need to the, assess the damages houses and other, there are toilets and other things, we will give the compensations. That is not limited. They, they give one, what, whatever they need according to their uh, GA assessment. So assessment now, going on now. Yeah. But where is, is there transparency in that process? Yeah. So right now, if, if, uh, it sounds to me like, based on what you were saying, that this National Council on Disaster Management is outdated, that it's not necessary anymore. I, no, they I give the permission to the, the allocator, allocate, unlimited allocation. They, when in disaster occur, they give the any amount of the money. Yeah. Yeah. But that's released from the treasury. Yeah, treasury. At the on the or the instructions of the finance minister. Finance minister, and who minister. is the yeah. president, or in this case, there the is prime no limit. Minister. Already, they already, uh, we already we spent about seventy-four million for the meals. Okay. Dilation, but uh, we did not start at the assessment. After the assessment, they will give you the release. Mr. Javier, just wait. Do you feel that I mean the disaster management act was 
adopted in 2005. Yeah. Do you feel that it is up to date or that it needs to be amended to no, make okay. the system more efficient? Ongoing. Process is ongoing. There is a process ongoing? Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you think we'll see uh, some results from that process anytime soon? I think, uh, sorry, it's up, sorry? The, you said the process to amend the I, disaster yeah, management. Already, at the attorney general, uh, so yeah. final it's stage. Yeah. Final stage yeah. Yeah, so we are Policy waiting for that one for a long time. Yeah. 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 To come back to this question, now there, the attorney general for a long there is a big things. theory out there and uh, to practically implement it, it will be a huge infrastructure project. But uh, now, during rainy seasons, the wet zone of our country receives plenty of rain and while that happens with the monsoon, the semi-arid zone and the dry zone of the country it faces droughts like it's flooding in Colombo and it's drought in Hambantota. So in some developed countries they've come up with this mechanism of uh, pumping water from wet zones into those dry zones. I know it's a huge infrastructure pro project but as an expert of hydrology, is it possible, is it practical uh, to do something like that in Sri Lanka? Uh, is it, it is possible. It's possible, and uh, and already some uh, already there are there are implemented projects in this country. Now, for example, recently built Moragahakan the reservoir, uh, divert water to dry zone. Even the entire Mahabali system has been made for diverting uh, uh, waters in the upcountry to the dry zone. But then can it be made in a way that it could reduce the floods in these low-lying areas? Yeah. So uh, the water can yeah, be pumped yeah. from these flood-prone areas? Yeah. Uh, and now, in, in some, uh, that is actually depend, depends. Now, for example, uh, have you heard about the uh, Floods in par in the north area and bullet single area. Yeah, bullet single. That that water comes from Kudaw, yeah, so the major tributary of Kaluk River. That water can be transferred to uh, the uh, the where Hamban Tota Udavalave, Udavalave reservoir. By we have already already uh, make, make made a study and make a proposal. And uh, if that water transferred to Udavalave. We can reasonably mitigate uh, floods in Bulat Singhala and Parindanwar area and, uh, and use that uh, uh, precise water resources uh, in dry zone. And, uh, and I don't believe uh, Kalana River waters can be diverted into dry zone for flood mitigation. I, that, because of the, because of the topographical reasons. That may not be uh, uh, possible. You can divert some amount of rain for, uh, waters, but uh, you need to divert a huge amount of water uh, in order to mitigate floods. But uh, Kalani River topography is not uh, such a way. So things are, things are de depending on the on, on many facts. But, but, but the, the, project, the project of uh, Minister Chamal Rajapaksa to uh, uh, have a waterway from uh, Singharaja to uh, Hambantota, that's okay. Uh, yeah, you may be reservoir. referring to uh, Ginnilola project. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. There is a project for, for a proposal for diverting Gin River and uh, Nilola River waters to Hambantota district. There is a proposal uh, that has been proposed not by politicians but by uh, professionals of our uh, our but organizations. But, but that politician seems to be taking a lot of uh, a lot of interest in the project. Um, so, how much of uh, rainwater flows into the sea, um, in your opinion, uh, Subhishwara? You mean f from rainwater? From rainwater. Which how much river? Of rainwater? Which river? Excuse it? me. I, 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 where, where are you? You are referring no, in as, a, as a country Lanka, whole. As a country, as a country, uh, as a I, I cannot exactly remember, but uh, I, because of that, I cannot. Uh, I have figures. I have figures. If you are um, that, those figures are not in my mind now, but uh, approximately uh, uh, now I remember. Kalana River brings around uh, uh, six hundred. Thousand acre feet to the river to the sea annually. Six hundred thousand acre feet, six okay. lakhs of acre feet, and uh, Kalu River brings a uh, little bit more. Uh, 
and there are there are there are such figures. There we actually my responsibility of is the is to calculate those uh, amounts. So I have all the figures. But if you have informed me such a kind earlier, of occasion, earlier. I could have yeah. brought that's all okay. the de de no, details. That, that's fine. Uh, that's yeah. fine, uh, Zubishwala. Uh, so we uh, go in for a short. Do you have any questions, yes, uh, Jaya? One last question from uh, Mr. Zayavira, if I may. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mr. Zayavira, the DMC has this. Uh, system called the disaster information management system which uh, analyzes disaster trends and uh, its impacts uh, in a systematic manner to ensure that uh, you can mitigate uh, such instances from uh, occurring. Um, can you tell me how this system works and uh, has it been utilized by the DMC effectively to, uh, to act proactively uh, like we have discussed uh, throughout the show today, uh, to avoid and uh, save our citizenry from uh, unforeseen natural disasters. Yes, thank you. Uh, the, after the recent Taute cyclone mm. uh, occurred in 13th and 15th, uh, 14th May, uh, we realized that the, the we discussed uh, not lengthy the Gampaha and Colombo get flooded heavily. We are not expected than other other years because this year flooded mainly occur not a, not only the river floods and the urban flooding. Mm. Actually this is the main causes to my knowledge you can see that the population increase, population density increase. When you compare the, our country we have to consider the whole factors. Eight, uh, 18, first census was 1871, our population was 2 million mm. in Sri Lanka. But today, 22 million nearly. That day, our uh, 1870s, the forest cover, natural forest, 85% is the total land of the country. Now we can reduce over nearly 25% of the total land. And also, the, the increase in the population density in the major city. District in the Colombo and Kalutara is the increase in population and density and also the major hub of the major development activity going on the country, mm. especially in the industries, commercial and major hub of the transport and also the uh, banks, the school, major schools are going on, uh, construction in the, this area and also the Exam the Colombo in the city. The, if you consider the build up area, more than 90 percent build up area. If you floor, that means for more than 85 90 percent. There is small land for rainwater drainage. That is the main causes. Here is the build up area. If you increase the development, there is a, a space are getting reduced to absorb the water and or retaining the water. Example, if you have every year, Polonava, Kaduela, those areas are getting flooded. If we are consider the elevation, ne uh, nearly almost sea level less than on one meter. So there is no very difficult to move the rainwater to the sea. So is that overpopulation or just poor management of uh, uh Drainage, the population will increase, and also the example the about uh, Colombo. Now it is reduced. I think few years ago, about 50% of the total population in the Colombo city living in the 7% of the total land. Majority of the uh, slum and shanty, they are living in the unauthorized uh, along the canal bank. So, what do you propose should be done, Mr. Javier? The, I actually the, the, after the uh, Taute incidents. The disaster management center realized the we want to study detail the Gampa incidents, Gampa and Colombo incidents. Our director general already sent to the district secretaries, two district secretaries, appoint the committee, technical committee, and evaluate the what what are the reason to this this year flooding, mm. and prepare the project proposal and put it in the development disaster. Uh, this, this the management system. Na, no, no, disaster, district disaster, uh, development council, no? 
ah, right. council and get the approval from them mm. and put in uh, hand over to the disaster management center so that we can propose the treasury to mitigate next year put in the next year budget so we, we also understand that the and we, we never expected in this year Colombian Gampa flood area because lot of upper hepatitis development hepatitis lot of there we can see that so but now allocations will be made for yeah, the future 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 hmm. right. would there be any effect uh, because of the port city uh, does any, can, can anyone respond to that the you mean uh, the, the the flooding situation yes. yeah uh, river mouth has no connection with the uh, okay. uh, port city uh, but recently we observed uh, kind of uh, the the tidal effects are so have been increased not not only not not only about the Colombo but all over the island uh, tidal tidal effects have been increased is it because of the bit. port city huh? is it because of the port city no that cannot be because of okay. port city because even if you take Baticolo tidal effects are higher than uh, right. before okay. so that cannot be the port city no. right. okay thank you very much uh, gentlemen we go in for a quick commercial break uh, when we come back uh, we discuss uh, more on uh, whether we are being reactive or proactive in terms of mitigating disasters in uh, sri lanka all this and more after the short commercial break stay connected stay with face the nation we will be right back मुखा මේ රට වට බැඳි මහා චල කඳ අපි රටේ වටිනාකම දිනෙන් දින ජාත්‍යන්තරයට කියාපානවා ගංගාවල තියෙන ඉතාම වටිනා පිරිසිදු ජලයට අපද්‍රව්‍ය එකතු කිරීමක සිද්ධ වෙලා තියෙනවා මේ මහා පරිමාණ විනාශයට විරුද්ධව ක්‍රියාත්මක වීම කියන එක ඉතාම අවශ්‍යයි එහෙම ක්‍රියාත්මක වුණොත් විතරයි මේ වෙන මහා විනාශය නතර කිරීමේ හැකියාව තියෙනවා පරිසරය වෙනුවෙන් ඔබ යවා කිරීමට කැමති නම් ඔබ වෙනුවෙන් අපි ඉදිරිපත් වෙන්න සූදානම්. රන් අඩපය කාලේ පුතිමය ආමන්ත්‍රණය. සැකේ කියන්නේ ඒක ඔයා හිතන සැකේ හරි වෙන්න පුළුවන් වැරදි වෙන්න. තරග පරාජයත් එක්ක වැඩි වශයෙන් එළියට එන කාරණාවක් තමයි තරග පාවා දීම ගැන. අන්න නේ මට නම් ඇවිල්ලා නැහැ. ඔබ කතා කරන්න බය. ඒ නෑ මම කතා කරන්නේ කයි සහාය වෙච්ච ප්‍රශ්නේ නෑ. නෑ නෑ නෑ. එහෙම බයක් නෙමෙයි. මම ක්‍රිකට් ක්‍රීඩාවෙන් නික්මෙන්න විශිෂ්ට එක විදිහට. ඔය විදිහේ ප්ලෑන් එක අද තියෙන. මේ පරිපාලන වලට එන්න නෑ. කරන්න පුළුවන් දේවල් ගොඩක් තියෙනවා. රන් අඩපය කාලේ බුද්ධිමය ආමන්ත්‍රණය Welcome back. This is uh, Face the Nation. Uh, we are in conversation with three government officials. Uh, let's start off the final round with um, uh, Sunil Jayavira, uh, Director, Preparedness Planning, Disaster Management Centre. You get two minutes to sum up and wrap your thoughts. I think uh, 
we plan increase awareness to the training of the local authority disaster risk mitigation because that is very important uh, they import them and include uh, every project we include the drr included project development plan because especially in the, the education center health sector industry center it is very important the drr included and also uh, presently we are collect the assessment what what, what are the reason and uh, hand over the budget not next year budget proposal and need the research and development on disaster risk is very important so we are lacking that part so that we want to improve that one and also need to the detailed risk map for the landslide and flood that is very important we are lacking so we already we prepared but we want to in the detail plan and also the, the this year with the uh, covid situation we couldn't do much work actually and also i propose the the media person we uh, request all of them we are uh, discuss on the subject during the disaster for pre i think we need to more discussion in the pre uh, before disaster we started the work on southwest monsoon april this year before april so we conducted a lot of program and we have a lot good mechanism of the national level to grassroots early warning mechanism and all district level of we for the development plan and monsoon preparedness plan with the covid situation this is the every district we prepare the, every if you want there are a lot of uh, every construct detail is there who are the responsible for the meals who are the responsible for the city and every government led our content is also there that is very important finally i special thank to the uh, serious previously we are conducted the gamed uh, program this this was a great initiative to help to dmc generate the more public awareness uh, about the impact of natural disaster in a massive scale uh, ratnapur kegol uh, ratnap uh, kalutaran gol actually that is very effective that type of program need to conduct in future with that i thank all of them to invite us to participate this valuable discussion thank you very much uh, sunil javi director prepared this planning disaster management center uh, we now move our attention towards engineer dr rc karuna wardana director general national building research organization or the nbro yeah thank you very much and uh, we uh, nbro national building research organization has uh, propose a strategic plan to uh, manage this landslide disaster management in the country so we we basically talk about three main program i mean the in coming <coughs> coming in future one is the resettlement of uh, high risk families in the uh, high risk families in the uh, high risk families who are living in the high risk areas to the safe areas this program is implemented and uh, so we, we would like to expedite this program and the second one is the uh, reducing the risk in the moderate risk areas for that uh, we have implement uh, government has uh, given have given allocate funds to about uh, 110 us million 110 us uh, dollars uh, to carry out large scale landslide mitigation work this is the work already started and under this project so we are trying to protect uh, uh, schools vulnerable to landslides hospitals and some major infrastructures and roads and also the upcountry railway line from rambukkan to uh, badulla and uh, from the other areas so we try to improve the this landslide early warning system so at the moment we are having about 100 uh, 350 automated rain gauges uh, we want to increase that one as well as we would like to get some uh, uh, work, we, we would like to make some work with the meteorology department to enhance the prediction to enhance the qualitative rainfalls so because at the moment uh, the rainfall prediction is the uh, quali qualitative we want to make it quantitative with the amount so that is the next target from that i think we can give the better early warning with the lead time to uh, evacuate the people so that is the uh, one of the uh, major future tasks and from the public what we are asking so we are making the whatever the possible way to safeguard you but from your side also you have to assist us you have to obey our recommendation and because disaster management is not a single man jobs it's uh, without public participation it's very difficult to make more effective so we request general public to uh, 
you would support and obey our instruction and uh, work with us, then your, your life will be safe. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Engineer Dr. Asri Karana Vardhana. Uh, we now move our attention to um, Engineer SPC Sugishwara, Director of Irrigation, Hydrology and Disaster Management. Yeah, as I am uh, representing Department of, of Irrigation, I uh, have to say something about uh, the position of our department as at present. Now, uh, the Irrigation Department as the responsible organization for pioneer organization in this, this country for managing uh, flood disasters and managing water resources and developing irrigation systems. Uh, I must say irrigation department has improved a lot during recent past. Now uh, we have already uh, prepared solutions for floods in uh, 11, 12 major river basins in uh, actually 12 major river basins in this country. Now uh, we are expecting, uh, uh, we, are, we are planning to propose uh, to the government these solutions for funds uh, during, uh, we, uh, however it is, uh, we know that implementing flood uh, mitigation proposals are very expensive. It's not uh, so easy uh, for a country like, uh, uh, developing country like Sri Lanka, uh, whatever it is, uh, uh, hopefully we uh, uh, we believe that we can improve uh, a lot in near future. Right. Thank, uh, thank you, you very much, um, Engineer SPC Sugishwara, Director of Irrigation, Hydrology and Disaster Management for joining us this evening on Face the Nation. Uh, Engineer Dr. Asri uh, Karna Vardhana, Director General, National Building Research Organization, as well as Sunil Jayavira, Director, Preparedness Planning, Disaster Management Center for joining us on Face the Nation tonight. Thank you very much, Nadim. Thank you very much, uh, Jamal. And thank you very much, Desar, uh, for joining us uh, this evening on Face the Nation. I leave you tonight with a quote, as I always do. The major problems in the world are the result of the difference between how nature works and the way people think. Take care and good night.